hi guys welcome to our youtube channel thank you very much for dropping by to watch this video uh, if you are a new subscriber thank you very much for dropping by and if you are a returning subscriber thank you thank you thank you so much for tuning in today okay guys so today we're gonna be talking about um how we immigrated to canada the program that we used you know since we landed um we've had a lot of people ask us questions about how did we come to canada what program did we use and we decided to you know just put this out there so that we can it can be beneficial to other people and people can you know learn one or two things and to also know the various ways and means that are available for them to you know um come to canada but before we go into the video today guys i'd like for you to please 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 if you haven't subscribed to this channel kindly click on the subscribe button so that you can you know get notifications anytime we drop new videos okay all right guys so today uh we're gonna talk about the program that we use to emigrate to canada and that is the canadian express entry program and when you talk about the express entry program you're, you're basically talking about two programs there are two programs under the express entry program you have the federal skilled workers program fsw for short and then you have the provincial nomination program pnp for short so i'm going to be using those two abbreviations a lot in this uh, particular video now but the express entry program itself is actually a points based system that you know assesses people's skills and other things and based on the points that you have then you can you know come to canada basically but the most important thing actually about the express entry program are the parameters that are usually assessed right because it's a point based system there are parameters that are assessed and points are allocated to each of it okay and that's what you know actually determines the overall score that you're going to have at the end of the day which is what is going to you know determine whether you qualify or do not you know qualify for the program now talking about the parameters that are usually assessed number one you know you're talking about um education now education what what do we, we mean by education education simply means like your uh, qualification okay so is it a bachelor's degree you have is it a master's degree that you have either of those two okay now each point there are different points that are allocated to the master's degree and to the bachelor's degree of course master's degree is you know higher than um, a bachelor's degree same for a phd okay now depending on what you have you get the point that is you know uh, for that particular qualification then you also talk about your language ability language ability uh you know they just want to know right like you can you, you claim you can speak english then we need you to take an exam so we can assess you know your english speaking skill or french as the case may be because again canada is a country where you know you can either speak english or you can speak french okay so when it comes to the language ability all, all that matters is that you take the english exam that is the ilts so depending on what you score in the different categories because you need to take exam and you're going to take exam for speaking for listening for reading and for writing what is important is that you actually aim to pass the exam getting an overall score of about 7.5 okay and yeah so education the second thing is language ability the third one is work experience all right work experience now work experience is also important because it is something that you know they also consider and the more experience that you actually have then the more points that you have now why work experience is one of the parameters is because the express entry program actually focuses on bringing in professionals right it focuses on bringing in professionals in different fields different areas of life are you a doctor are you a nurse are you an accountant customer service person you know there's a whole lot of um there's there's just a whole lot of occupations okay so that's you know uh they focus on bringing in professionals so the amount of experience that you have also determines the kind of score that you're going to have as well again 
the more the uh, years of experience and the more the score that you can get for that particular parameter but again anything from five years and above actually attracts the same score so what that means is someone who has a one year experience and another person who has a three years experience will definitely not have the same score but someone who has five years experience and somebody who has 10 years experience in a particular field will have the same score you know the same score that is attached to um work experience as a parameter basically okay uh so the next thing that you also want to consider is your age now age is also a very important factor when it comes to the express entry program and why is that although canada wants like a whole lot of people to come into their country you know but they are also looking for young people you know not just um old not just old people or anybody because already the 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 aged population here in canada is quite on the high side so they are looking for young people to cushion that effect so what that means is that the younger you are then the higher the score that you can get for age as a parameter the older you get then the more your score reduces okay so anything from 30 years and above your score starts to drop you start to you start to lose points you know based on the fact that you are getting older but if you're young then the more the points that you can actually um that you can actually get so uh, another parameter i also like to mention here is um, your marital status so what that means is are you single or are you married right so if you're single then you higher your chance of you know getting something higher for yourself but if you're married and you want to come along with your spouse like the two of you are included in the application now that's a little bit tricky because then you will have the primary applicant and then you will have the secondary applicant now all of those parameters that i mentioned will be done compulsorily for the primary applicant also for the secondary applicant but for the secondary applicant what they have you know also has an effect on the cumulative score that you're going to have as a group okay so let's say the primary applicant has a master's degree for education and um the uh, other person that is a spouse now has a bachelor's degree then already you know there's already some uh, friction there like the score you're going to command having by yourself having a master's degree is not the same as what you're going to have is your spouse if your spouse also has a master's degree now your spouse has a bachelor's degree you have a master's degree there's already you know some imbalance there and you know your spouse may also now there are something there are some things that are not necessarily compulsory for your spouse to have it just basically depends on the total score you know that you guys are for example your spouse may or may not need to write ILTS they may not need to do credential evaluation you know it just depends on uh, the cumulative score that you have as an individual and then when you add, add your spouse if your spouse doesn't have an ILTS for example and you run it you put in their age the educational qualification and you know some other things so regardless of the fact that they don't have IELTS or they don't have credential evaluation your score may reduce or it will reduce but it may not reduce so much so that it will generally affect you depending on the primary applicant again like how old are you what is your um, level of experience you know it's just there, there's just that uh, friction in there so it, it depends on the balance that you know can be applied basically and then some other factors that is usually uh, considered is uh, but I don't this this particular factors are not general factors to me because it's not something that applies to you know everybody unlike the ones I mentioned before but these other ones too they give you additional points if you have them so basically you're talking about like did you school in Canada for example if you schooled in Canada then you get an additional point for yourself uh, if you have family here in Canada then you also get an additional point you know for yourself everything for the the express entry program just heavily depends on how much score you can you know gather for yourself based on the various parameters that have been you know listed out so basically 
that's actually what the um, Express Entry Program is. Another thing that is important about the Express Entry Program is that so far you have your educational qualification, great, fantastic, your master's degree, your bachelor's degree. It is also important that you evaluate those degrees. You know, they just they have about there are about four bodies in Canada that you can use, like the ECAS or West. West is also very popular. I know a lot of people will know about West, but you also need to evaluate your credential just so that they can know that the level of your um, qualification is the same as the Canadian, you know, level of education. That's there. And we also spoke about IELTS earlier. Uh, and I also mentioned that it is important that you aim to score an uh, overall band of about 7.5. It's very important because that also heavily influences the total number of scores that you're going to have at the end of the day so having said all of that once you have been able to fix all of those you know factors and you've been able to identify what you have and what you do not have the express entry program now generates a total score for you based on the information that you've entered and that score is what you're going to get into the pool with now for express entry draws are usually done every uh, month twice in a month now i am very sure of um, before um covid started way back before covid started draws were ev done every two weeks you know every two weeks and there would be a particular cutoff mark uh, that would be used now recently the canadian government has started the all program you know draw part of what you have the express entry of fsw they've just re recently started that in this july and the last cut of mark for what they did was actually 542 542 so what that means is that if you have you know um fixed in all the details for all those parameters that we mentioned earlier and you have a cumulative score of 542 and above then you can get an opportunity to get something we call an invitation to apply okay but if you do not have something that is as high as 542 you know then you're not going to get an invitation to apply but that's based on the cutoff mark another thing about the cutoff mark is it reduces every it reduces you know it reduces every time the draw is conducted it's just generally based on how many people are in the pool and you know the various scores that they have you just select like an average score so it, it generally reduces uh, it, it, it never used to be as high as 540 plus and above until recently and that's because during covid no draw was actually done at all i recall when we did as the Cut of mark then was around 470 thereabout. Okay, so the draw reduces a bit cut off. I mean, now reduces say every almost every time when the draw is conducted. And recall that the draw is actually conducted every two weeks in a month. Okay, so if you do not have um, anything close to the cut off mark, then what other option do you have? And that's when we talk about the provincial nomination program. The uh, provincial nomination program is actually another type of program under the express entry program. Um, and the, the difference between the provincial nomination program and the FSW program is that for the FSW program, everything is in your hands, basically. It just depends on the, the score you're able to gather for yourself, okay? and yeah so that's everything about the fsw the scores that you're able to gather for yourself if you are able to gather enough points for yourself to meet up with the cut off mark voila fantastic then good for you you can get your invitation to apply but if you do not have you know um up to that cut off mark then the provincial nomination program is usually the second option now the difference between the FSW and the provincial nomination program is for FSW when you come to Canada you can stay anywhere in Canada you can relocate to any part of Canada any province of your choice but with the provincial nomination program you would need to go to a particular province and that is the province that invites you to apply 
okay for somebody who wants to you know use the route for the provisional nomination program it's also uh, straightforward a little bit different from fsw but the common thing is that all of those parameters that we listed before you'd also need to meet up with those requirements before you can apply for the provincial nomination program so your education language ability that is ielts your age your work experience your marital status all of those things to actually come in play when it comes to provincial nomination now the difference is when you run all of those things and then you don't have enough score it is still good for the candidates or for the person to enter the pool even though you do not have uh, so let's say for example you run all of those things and your point is was 300 let's say what you have you no know, let's say you have um, let's say your point is 350 for example that's what you're able to gather for yourself it is also still good for you to enter the pool now even though you're not going to get the ita you know based on the points that you have what usually happens with the provincial nomination is provinces in canada require different skills part-time with different people say for example people are uh, the ontario government might actually be looking for engineers or doctors and you know um, we, um let's say the abata governments can actually be looking for professionals in customer service nurses you know so usually what happens with provincial nomination is those provinces based on their need would go into the pool to see who has the skill that we are you know looking for so let's say ontario who is looking for engineers or doctors now we go into the pool and they look at the occupation of this person oh this person is a doctor oh this is an engineer then they issue them um, a notification of interest an noi okay so notification of interest is to say oh we are interested in you as a person based on the skill that you have and would like for you to come to ontario so when you have that when you have that notification of interest and you accept it you know there are some documents and documentations that you would do with the ontario government and when you've done that the uh, they are satisfied with all that you provided an additional 600 points would be given to you by the um province and you can add that to the existing 350 points that you have bringing your total points to 950 okay so now when your total point is 950 and say again for example the cut off is 542 you already have more than 542 so it is very sure that in the next draw that is going to be conducted you're going to get your invitation to apply so that is actually the way the provincial nomination program works the province you know can indicate interest in you based on your profession or based on your skill and they tell you to come and apply now there are some provinces that you can also directly apply to okay but that also you know involves some level of work from your part as a person you need to look at the provinces and see who is in need of your skill always the need of the experience that you have the field that you're in and then you can apply to them you know for that uh, notification of interest some provinces also do that or again the is the easier way is that the provinces just go into the pool and they you know and pick people based on the skills and the experiences that they have and they issue them that notification and with it comes an additional 600 points which you will add to your existing points and then voila you get your um invitation to apply so for the provincial nomination program everything is not totally or absolutely in your hands unlike the fsw where it is based on the points that you can generate for yourself so uh and then you are able to you know meet up with the uh required cutoff and then you get your invitation to apply and you can settle anywhere in canada the pnp on the other hand is heavily reliant on the province that you know is um, in need of the skill that you have and the additional points that you know they give you and uh, stuff so uh, pretty much that is actually how the express entry program works and it is also very important to also know that of course after you've gone through all of these processes another thing you also need to pay attention to is the proof of fund that you're going to be needing to you know run the program because you're coming to Canada and Canada Canadian government wants to know that you're able to take care of yourself at least for a period of about six months when you land in Canada so usually 
there are different figures for different you know uh, family composition say for example i think for one person you need about thirteen thousand thirteen thousand dollars you know to have in your account to show as proof of fund and if you're like a family of three you probably need about i think twenty five thousand you know for a family of three that is mother father and a child right so there are different uh proof of fund requirements for different family composition and that is also something that one also you know needs to um pay attention to so but generally to run the um express entry program the the, the um financial commitment you'll be needing would be the fund you're going to need to run your evaluation because uh evaluating with either west ecas any of those bodies actually cost some money and then you'd also need to you know register for ielts okay either with uh, British Council or MOD in Nigeria or whatever board is governing the IELTS in whatever country that you're watching this from so uh, yes and you'd also need to pay the express entry application fee okay so pretty much that is actually how the um, express entry program work, works again a recap of the factors that you have to pay attention to your age your educational qualification your work experience your marital status um, your language ability and other factors that may also help if you have them if you schooled in Canada you know, if you have family in Canada if you understand and speak French you can also write the um, I think it's TEF or the examination for uh, French just like you have IELTS for English so pretty much all of those things in addition will determine the amount of score that you're going to have and the score that you have will determine if you qualify for the invitation to apply based on what the cutoff mark is so that's that's it i'm going to be putting a, a link in uh, the comment section so you can actually uh, click on that link to test strong to just see based on your current situation or circumstance what will my score be do i qualify for fsw direct or do or is provincial nomination something you know i need to look into and we're also going to have there the link you know of um, how much you're going to need to come to canada based on whether you're single you're married you're coming with your children how many are you you know we're also going to have that link in uh, the comment section so thank you very much again we've come to the end of this video thank you very much if you have any questions or anything that you'd like for us to clarify please feel free to drop them in the comment section and we'll be definitely there to you know answer your questions all right guys thank you very much for dropping by to watch this video i hope i've been able to you know address your questions and i hope that i've been able to as much as possible simplify the process for you guys uh so yeah thank you very much for joining me today see you next time